What do you say to everybody out here in the bearded buckland? This is awesome. <laughs> Welcome back everyone to Nebraska part two. Last week we left you guys after just one day of hunting where I killed an awesome mule deer and Blaine's son Adrian wrapped his tag around his first white-tailed deer ever. After such a successful first day, we just can't wait to see what the rest of the week holds. With Austin still holding both of his tags and myself holding onto a white tail tag, there's still a lot of hunting left to do. And I can promise you guys that you're gonna wanna stick around to the very end for this one. Okay, okay, here he comes. He's getting up, he's getting up. Brandon, you want them? This place is amazing. I lie up. This is my favorite trip to come every year. So picking it up where we left off after a long night of celebrating, we got up semi early the next morning and got back out there in search of whitetails. So Austin headed back to the ground blind he hunted the first morning, while Blaine and I went over to a big alfalfa field to observe what the deer are doing over there. Second morning, we already have a pretty decent buck spotted down here. Now, what we do on him, we don't know just yet. There's a lot of places to make some moves. If he comes up into one of these draws, like we've seen him do in previous years, we let him come up and maybe even better stay with his doe and make a play and we'll just kind of stalk up around him and come down above him, maybe try and get a shot. first sort of little canyon that we were glassing. We got this little three by three and some does right in front of us. They're not big, they're not the smartest. It's a good start. We're gonna keep moving here, seeing if we can find some more. It's a perfect day. They should be out sunbathing in the sun somewhere on these hillsides. Well, let's go find some more. Live. To catch all the crazy behind the scenes action from the Bearded Buck, like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. Well, we spent the rest of that morning glassing in hopes of catching one of these bucks headed to bed down, but we came up empty handed and so did Dad. So we decided to meet up, grab a quick lunch, and then I was heading back to the ground blind where I've been hunting for the past day and a half. Let's 
buck right there. It's big. It's, it's really big. It's, it's really nice deer. It's really nice deer. Brandon, you want him? Yep. Yep. Done. Done. Dude, that is an awesome buck, man. Woohoo! Dude, he's got stuff all over him, man. Oh. Dude, what a stalk. We stalked up probably four or five hundred yards the whole way up here. We are literally on our way to the stand. And we saw a giant racked buck. We were like, holy crap. We pulled the truck to the side, stalked up the whole way over here. He was bedded twice. We couldn't see him in the camera. We, we could hardly see him with binos or anything. And I just grunted to him there. He stood up and <laughs> came over, man. That's a good deer. Oh yeah, That's a nice buck. <laughs> oh my. That deer, look at the character. Split G2, split G3s on both sides. Oh my. Blaine has the deer, man. What an awesome couple of days it's been in Nebraska. Look at this deer. What a tank, man. Look at the mass. <laughs> Milo, thank you. That was an awesome, awesome stock. Man, it just it couldn't have worked out any better. Man, I cannot even explain to you what I'm feeling right now. He's just a tank of a deer. Huge head and neck on this thing. Oh, Blaine has the deer, man, I'm telling you. Blaine and Milo have it figured out here in Nebraska. Tons of great whitetail and mule deer. I cannot tell you how pleased I am to take this guy. He might be my best deer to date. This segment is brought to you by Vortex Optics. Vortex, the force of optics. Send you a picture of this thing, it's freaking awesome. It's two to both sides and switching three to both sides. Oh my gosh, that's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. Send me a pic and go out there, and after you're done, go find a muley. All right. All right, thanks. Bye. 
well, we just got set up for an evening sit here. And as of the time we left Austin after lunch, he was still holding a mule deer and a white tail tag. But I just got that call I've been waiting for saying that he just slammed a big white tail. And um, we're in an elevated platform. I'm overlooking the bottom here. And we're sitting at the middle of about five different draws coming together with heavy timber in front of us. Man, we just got to keep our eyes peeled tonight. The bucks are rutting. They've been chasing does all over this morning. We're hoping something chases something in this hall tonight. We could get a buck that's been on trail cam in here. We could get a buck from a total different property coming into us tonight here. So super excited to see what happens. We have about two and a half hours till dark. So it's prime time. We're going to pipe down a little bit and make this happen. So while dad was trying to rattle in some cows, Milo and I were loading up my buck into the truck when we got word from Blaine that he spotted a good muley on the other side of the property. So with less than two hours until sunset, we had to kick it into high gear to get over there in time. Well, what Austin forgot to mention is he's headed straight for the canyon right next to me. So I guess with just two hours left, my hunt is taking a back seat while Austin tries to fill his last tag of the trip. Well, we just pulled down the point. Those muleys are or down in this bottom right here, tucked up in one of those guts. So I guess what the plan is, we're just gonna sneak down below them and see if we can see up one of those cuts where they're bedded or what they're doing. We'll go down and we'll follow this bank around so they can't see us up. And then once we get a little closer, we'll try and move over a little bit. And we can look up the cuts as we go. Muley down. Are you kidding me? Two deer. <laughs> we just killed a white tail and a mule deer within three hours of each other. I am tagged out in Nebraska. <laughs> oh my God, Brady, give me somebody. We just killed a giant white tail in a giant three by three. He's got mass, he is super high. This place is amazing. I lie up, this is my favorite trip to come every year. And it, it literally, it couldn't have worked out any better. Oh man, we are tagged out. Oh, oh yeah, look how high he is. Look how long those, those I guess you call them not a muley first dirt point or G, G2s, just like a whitetail. But yeah, he's got good mass, good front forks. Yeah, those are super long. Look how long those are. Oh man. <laughs> man, I guess what an awesome way to end the trip for me. I mean, I'm now tagged out with you know an awesome white tail and an awesome muley and you know he didn't even see us coming we snuck down through here um the badlands pattern kept us super hidden in these tall grasses i mean we just blend in so well i mean him he had him and his doe were standing here they had no clue and you know we got we got it done on a great muley Well, after Austin messed up my hunt on the second afternoon to kill his mule deer, I was left with three days to fill my last tag. And with how this week has been going so far, filling this last tag should be no problem at all. But as the days passed, it seemed like these bucks got locked down with does. We searched everywhere looking for an active buck, and on the last day, we were finally able to get in front of a buck that was hot on a doe. That's right, a last day buck and I missed him. So we left Nebraska with my whitetail tag unfilled. And I was perfectly okay with that. It was a fun trip filled with a ton of memories that we'll never forget. But when we got a call from Blaine a few weeks later that he had an opening for me to come back out with a muzzleloader, 
I jumped on the next flight and headed back to Nebraska to get some redemption. Hey, you got some unfinished business to do here, huh? Yep. yep. You gotta make up a little revenge on that. We just rode into the ranch for the first time on our second trip out to Nebraska this year, trying to have a little bit of revenge on a buck that I missed in rifle season. And Blaine's kept an eye on the ranch for us while we've been going and seeing this buck and a couple other good ones in the same area where we were last time out. So we're sort of slowly glassing our way in from the truck, making sure we don't bump anything till we get to a canyon we want to sit on. So we'll get out and we'll get to the end of one of those canyons and watch several fingers where those deer could be coming to bed in here in the morning. So we have three days this time to try and get it done. Well, they only made it about halfway to where they wanted to be when Blaine spotted a good buck in the canyon. So with a muzzleloader in his hand, it was time for Dad to get that chip off his shoulder. Let's see if you can actually hit this one. Remember, aim small, miss small. After all that, <laughs> oh my gosh, man. We grunted that buck in out of that. We watched him for an hour, a little over an hour. And after five days of rifle season, in a full hard day with the muzzleloader, we got a buck down finally here in Nebraska. He's a, he's a cool looking buck. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh my. Look at the mass on that deer. Oh, what a beaut. Check this out. We saw something odd on him there, huh? Oh man, what a beaut. What an awesome spot and stock. With a final grunt him out of his bed. Look at those main beams, they come all the way around. Heck, they come four or five inches from touching there. What a body on that deer. Listen, we put some miles on to get a whitetail down here in Nebraska. We walked for, we shot our mule deer earlier in the year in rifle season, and we walked the remaining three and a half days, four days, trying to find a whitetail. And we come across a few good ones. I had that mishap and missed it, and Blaine's kept an eye on this farm for us for the last couple of weeks since we've been out here. Said he's still been seeing good buck activity. We hopped on a plane, come back out with muzzleloader season, and, um, Got the muzzleloader out here, and dang, this have worked out perfect. I can't think of any better way to wrap up season four than another great hunt in Nebraska with my dad. You know, the main reason we started filming our hunts here at the Bearded Buck was to preserve on video the experiences that our right to hunt has provided us and to pass those experiences on to the next generation. We try to show hunting in the outdoors in a good light to encourage others to take this sport and start a new tradition of their own. With that being said, and I know my dad mentioned it last week, our hunting traditions have never been under attack more than they are right now. So I want to highly encourage each and every one of you to get out and vote. I'm talking about voting at all levels, local, regional, state, and national. Your vote counts. I'm not going to sit here and tell you who to vote for. All I'm asking you to do is to get out and vote your values. If you want to be able to pass the hunting traditions on to your kids and your grandkids, like Blaine and all of us have, the choice is clear. I bring this up because it has recently been brought to my attention from the great folks over at Hunter Nation that over 50% 
of sportsmen are not voting at all. More directly here in Pennsylvania, we have over 1.6 million licensed hunters and fishermen in our state. Out of that 1.6 million, over 600,000 of them did not vote in the last election. We all need to vote our values. It's a clear choice to us, so I'll wrap up by asking you to please get out and vote your values to protect the future of this great tradition. And myself still holding on to a white tail tag. There's still a lot of <laughs> hopes of catching one of these bucks heading back down downtown. <laughs>